I'm not going to test you guys over all this information, but when we get to the slide that I want you guys to remember, I'll tell you about it. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I want you to remember, we're going to actually do in the today's lab too. So you'll have a couple different chances to learn about them. So today we're going to talk about folds and faults. Uh, basically, we learned about how sedimentary layers are formed. Um, they're formed from bottom to top, horizontal layers, where the oldest layers at the bottom, the youngest layers on top. So this is about how rock formations can be deformed. Come on, there we go. So here's an example of just a uh, rock distortion. Do you guys see all the ripples and bands in that hill right there? So how does something like that happen? That's what we're looking at. Now this kind of stuff doesn't happen overnight. Um, for example, hang on a second. Oh no, okay, it's gone now. Uh, Say what? So this stuff didn't happen overnight. For example, we're going to use Plato to kind of help us uh, uh, interact with this. But Plato, you can squeeze your hands. Rocks, you can't actually deform rocks or distort rocks, but it takes years and years and years. So rocks can act like putty, but out, but out only out over long periods of time. And we've kind of already seen some of this. We know that rocks can change shape because we've talked about convergent plate boundaries and lots of different plate boundaries that can distort rocks. So these these are kind of a deep, these are detailed diagrams to show you how when two plates collide, two really big rocks collide, how they can distort the land around it. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'll read these, but I'm going to show you guys examples in just a second. So evidence of lateral compression or Distortion is uh, formerly horizontal layers are twisted, bent, or broken, and some are folded or pushed over on their sides or even upside down. We're not going to really talk about the upside down ones because those are confusing. But here's an example of some folded sandstone. So you can kind of see, like in the middle, that uh, at one point the rocks were laid on top of each other straight horizontally, but then over time something happened to where they were folded. And so study this kind of the branch of geology that studies these things is called structural geology. So the things that we're looking at today are called geologic structures. So a structural geologist looks at the structure of the land and how it changes over time. And of course, you know, it's, it's very, you know, you might, want, might not want to build a town on top of that because it might not be the most stable place to live. So here's some examples. So I, I like this. I like this diagram because the very top left one shows what your undeformed rock looks like. In other words, that's what a sedimentary rock layer should look like. It should be horizontally deposited from bottom to top. Everything's straight. Everything's nice. But then if you add compression, it can get squished. Tension, it can kind of get dragged out and thinned in the middle. Shearing, a whole bunch of different stuff can happen. It can get distorted one way, twisted the other way. So let's look at some examples. Uh, so the fact, some factors that can affect how rocks are deformed is the intensity of the stress. That just means how, how much force is being applied to push these rocks together or pull them apart. The heat of the rock. So the temperature of how a rock is can affect how rocks can be torn apart. Can you guys guess, is it easier to uh, mold a Hot rock or cold rock? Yeah, it's, so it's, it's hot. Just kind of think about uh, like dough. When you have dough in the fridge versus dough at room temperature, it's much easier to work with that bread dough when it's nice and warm. Same with rock. Uh, the warm butter, yeah, butter too. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's a good example too. So the warmer a rock is, the easier it is to move around, especially if it's melted. If it's molten, then it's not just like liquid. Mm -hmm. Yes. Rock composition, that just, that just says that some rocks are easier to mold than the other ones. Like sandstone is very brittle versus like mo lots of igneous rocks like uh, quartz or obsidian are very hard. They're very, not as easily to, uh, to distort. I'm gonna skip this one. Oh. 
Yeah, so the, yeah, okay. Actually, yeah, so this one is important because, okay, so the first thing we're talking about is folds. So a fold is just a bend in a rock layer. So if you see something that's bent, that's called a fold. There are two types of folds. There's a syncline, which is a down fold, and decline is up fold. If you guys can't remember that, I'm gonna show you some examples. So for example, here, here's a fold. On the left, you have an anticline, which means it kind of, it goes up, syncline, it goes down. You can think, you can kind of think of like an anticline as a hill and a syncline like a valley. That's, this isn't how all hills and valleys are made, but if that makes it easier for you to think about, you can think, think of it like that. So you guys will probably be asked about anticlines and synclines in the future. So anticlines again is folded upward, syncline is bent downward. So here's what it looks like before erosion, after it erodes. And what I mean by erosion is that after so much time, water or wind can blow off the tops of these hills. And what you end up with is a pattern that looks like this. So because in the anticline over here, the oldest rock was pushed way up. And so if a geologist is walking across this landscape, it's really easy to find some old rock he doesn't even have to dig because it's already been pushed up by the anticline. Syncline has the opposite effect. The younger rock is in the middle. And we're gonna talk more about this on Monday. We'll talk more about the layers of rocks and how to determine the ages of rocks, relative ages of rocks. So, so here's a, another here's another example of anticline and syncline. In this picture, where is the anticline? Well, it's all there's it's all, all about the same height at the top. So left side or right side, which one is the anticline? Yep, anti is up. Yep. So anticline is, is uh, that's on the left side. We have the anticline. Right side is a sort of a syncline. So up, uh, up at the top of the anticline, there'd be older rocks. And at the top of the syncline, there'd be younger rocks. Here's a really wild example here. So this, so this, you know, this thing is getting really twisted around. Um, I'm not gonna go through all these slides, but I wanted you guys to see these because there's different ways that these can erode. And I think it just thought it was really cool to look at. Like this is an example of how a stream can erode an anticline. And you might see something like that in the Grand Canyon. And here, this is showing that this is a syncline. And so not all, like I said, not all rocks erode equally. So this sandstone is not as resistant to erosion. So that is what remains after years and years of erosion. Okay, I'm not gonna, okay. And here's another, just a practical example. So when you have an anticline and you have oil, sometimes that oil can be pushed up. So, you know, they can, so just something practical to think about is that when people are drilling, those anticlines can be helpful because they push up whatever is deep under the earth. Okay, so faults. So for faults, there are two terms I want to go over. Let me come back. I'm going to come back to this slide, but there's something called a hanging wall and a foot wall. So faults, we talked about fault lines are kind of like where earthquakes can occur. Um, we kind of thought of them as just like kind of straight lines on the map. But when you look at what's under the earth, sometimes it kind of goes slanted. So there's two walls. The, the hanging wall is the one that kind of goes slanted inward. It's where you would like, if you're going to, you couldn't really climb that. So just think of a guy hanging from a rope. The foot wall, again, is slanted, but you can actually climb this one. So just think of somebody climbing the foot wall. We're gonna, so we're gonna go over normal faults, reverse faults, and a thrust fault is a type of reverse fault. And then we'll go, the last one we'll look at is a strike slip fault. And I know I'm throwing lots of terms at you, but you guys will have time to practice in the lab. Uh, so hopefully, I'm hoping the lab will help. So here's, here's what they look like. A normal fault, normal fault is when the hanging wall travels down the foot wall. Let me move my little chat, my little thing out of the way. So normal fault, the hanging wall goes down. Reverse fault, the hanging wall goes up. 
That just might take some use to, some uh, getting used to thinking about that. So again, normal fault, hanging wall goes down, reverse fault, hanging wall goes up. So normal is kind of easy to think about because it looks like the ground is sinking, but reverse, it looks like the ground is moving upward. A and a thrust fault is a special type of reverse fault where the hanging wall goes up, but it's at an extreme angle. I think it's like 30 degrees or less. Questions before I show you some examples? Yes. Yes, yeah, incline is the one that's bent down. Yes. Anticline goes up, syncline goes down. Yes. Yeah. Maybe you can think about sins. Sins are bad, so they go down. I don't know. It's okay. As long as we keep it PG, you can say hell. It's okay. Just don't say, what the hell's wrong with my grade? <laughs> uh, so evidence of faults, there's some displacements of rocks, pulverized rocks, and key beds are cut. I'm gonna show you what a key bed is. Key beds are important, but I'll show you what that is in a second. Here's an example of a normal fault. So again, the ground is sinking. This is called the hanging wall on the right side on the top there. Hanging wall, because that's the wall you would hang from. Hanging wall is going down the foot wall. I should have took that title off so you guys could tell me what it was. But this is a normal fault. Again, the hanging wall is going down. So key bed, do you guys see that black stripe that's right here and then there's another one down there? So at one point, those black stripes were in line with each other. But when the fault occurred, again, the ground sunk down. So everything on the left side kind of just sunk downward. Um, and the, the ground is level because erosion cut off the top of the foot wall. But this is called a normal fault because that key bed fall, fell down into the ground. So that, that key bed helps us keep track of where the ground has been. Here's no, okay, here's another one. So you guys think, do you guys think this is a normal fault or reverse fault? Is it yeah, it's, re it's really, it's, it's actually impossible to tell when the ground is eroded. I think this is still a normal fault because I think that this, here's the key bed on the right. It's almost like the picture right here. Keep the key bed right there. And then there's key bed right here. It looks like, I think it's gone down. Or else, yeah, if this was a reverse fault, you see this key bed on the left go up, but it's actually down. So this is a normal fault because the ground has gone down or the, sorry, the hanging wall has gone down. I couldn't find any pictures of a reverse fault, but here's what it would look like. So the reverse fault, yeah, is where this key bed has gone up. That's what a reverse fault would look like. Where? On the left side? So see the see so see this yellow stripe right here? So huh? Yeah, I, I, I'm trying the cursor isn't very good. It's a little green cursor. Yeah, so this there here's the key bed right here. So it's a strain of gold ore. Here we go, right there. So that gold ore on the right side. So the right side, you got to think about, okay, is this a hanging wall or a foot wall? This is a hanging wall because you hang from it. So the hanging wall is going up, which makes that a reverse fault. It, yeah, it's, so it's going to be a lot at once. We're all turns to go over it, don't worry. I forgot what I was doing there. I'm gonna skip this one. The last one is probably the easiest one is strike slip fault. So strike slip fault is basically what we think about when you, if you remember transform faults or transform boundaries, that's what strike slip fault is. Strike slip fault, where's a good picture? Here we go. Strike slip fault is where basically where there's no slant in the ground and everything's kind of moving side by side. So here, like it says offset hills and streams, the streams are, kind of offset from each other. And these valleys used to be connected, but now everything's kind of uh, shifted a little bit. Yes, exactly, yeah. Cool. 
I'm not going to ask you guys to remember this one. This is kind of like a combination. So, so I just wanted you guys to know that a lot of these things could happen all at the same time. So this is a strike slip, and it's also a, a normal fall. So it's going down and to the right. So the Earth can move in lots of weird ways. And this is showing another oil example. The last one is a joint joint fracture, which I'm not going to quiz you guys on, but a joint fracture is basically where the ground is fractured, but there's no apparent movement. Like you can't tell which way the ground is moving. Yeah, like you can see that there are cracks going like north and south and east and west. So there's lots of movement, but there's no uh, there's no single direction the ground is moving. Just lots of movement. Okay. So you guys have questions? Do you want me to go over a certain thing again? I know I threw a whole lot at you. Well, I did record it, so you can watch it. Uh,